Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. every night. Hello everybody, this is Alex Bennett, and this is of course the Ramble. The Ramble goes from now until uh, uh, midnight, uh, Eastern Daylight Time, and if you're listening to us at some other time and it's not at night or whatever, uh, you're listening to a replay on our 24-7 uh, feed. That's good. Enjoy it. It'll be a lot of fun, I think. And to start off the fun, uh, we try calling an old friend of ours. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for us to do something that we like to do. Uh, We always call ahead of time because this person has something unusual to say whenever he answers the phone. Okay, there it goes. There it goes. I told you to never call me when I'm watching the high chaparral. <laughs> Thank you. Something a little like a trip down memory lane for the kids there who like the Western. Stephen Pearl, ladies and gentlemen, how did you come up with high chaparral? Where I don't that- know. I was just watching the old Chuck Wagon channel. <laughs> they were showing it. So they're, they're I thought sh- I'd incorporate it into, to, into today's opening riff. Because I was trying to think, like, you know, who in the world uh, has uh, <laughs> re- could remember High Chaparral? Uh, people who didn't watch Bracken's World, well, I guess. I never watched a <laughs> single episode of High Chaparral. Me neither, but now I'm starting to catch up. And so. what, the fuck, <laughs> what the fuck does High Chaparral mean in the first place? That's a chaparral that's fucking high. I don't know. It's a, <laughs> I think they explained it on, on the third episode of Lancer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You know, when they, say oh, go- when they say golden age of television, they're really fucked. You know? I mean, when you go back and look at those shows, I mean, take somebody like, um, oh, here's a good example. I Love Lucy. Yeah. I mean, come on. By today's standards, it was a piece of shit. Well, it was a lot better than uh, like Petticoat Junction or Hazel or any of that other crap. Yeah, well, like, yes, so it was like, but it that was, was like the yardstick of crap. But but, uh, <laughs> but, but, but it was just really stupid slapstick comedy that today, if they sure. did it, everybody would say this is terrible. This is horrible. Well, yeah, they they tried it in the seventies with Laverne and Shirley. They rehashed it again, and then uh, yeah, yeah, they keep doing it. So it's just the same old crap recycle. Well, but I, I get a lot of these gold golden oldies channels and all these old shows, and you watch it. This sucked. <laughs> it sucked then, and it sucks now. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of one of those old shows that was good. I, you know, what was pretty good in its day. Peter Gunn was pretty good. Uh, they show that every night. I haven't watched it yet. It, but, uh, it, it, it at least made an attempt to be a little different than the normal television fair in the way it was produced and acted and so uh, on. Um, Dragnet was horrible. Oh, and, it was so bad it was good. Yeah. Every time we find a baddie in a back alley, OD on smack, we find three sticks of Mary Jane in the pocket. Tell me that isn't harmless. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> I love, I love the, the lectures are the best. Maybe you like taking LSD, that magic sugar cube, freaking out, blowing your mind and taking the trip. Well, there's another kind of magic cube that'll take you on a trip. The library's full of them. They're called books. <laughs> the lectures are the best, man, the best. <laughs> uh, I think the best episode, the one that we all love to watch, you know, was the episode uh, with LSD, with the kid who was high oh, on LSD. Oh, Blue Boy. I've got, yeah. like, Nick at Night years ago had viewers, like, uh, write in or, you know, call or whatever for their favorite Dragnet episode, and they'd show it yeah. before YouTube, where you can watch whenever you wanted. And the uh, Blue Boy went hands down. That was everybody's favorite episode. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was amazing. It was just amazingly, oh, yeah. uh, amazingly and it, bad. At the end, the kid ODs on acid, and he, <laughs> he wanted to get further out there, man. Well, <laughs> he made it. Bam, 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 bam. You know, it, there are a lot of things. When it came to drugs, uh, there were a <laughs> lot of uh, touchstones in in uh, in media and cinematic and television history that t- that that stereotype the drug like for instance we all go back to reefer madness is stereotyping marijuana hey you're going to smoke uh-huh. it's going to go crazy you're going to jump out a window 
All right. (laughs) Uh, uh, Quite frankly, I know uh, hundreds of people who smoke marijuana, and not one of them had ever attempted to jump out a window. I did, but I lived on the first floor, and I was in a hurry. (laughs) The the door was being used, so I just like climbed out the window and went to the candy store. (laughs) But I mean, I was was in a hurry to get something to eat. (laughs) And and you know, in all the years that I've known people who smoke marijuana, not one has thought about committing a crime because it would be too much work. Exactly. I got to leave the house. Screw that, man. You know, I don't know. Listen to the Allman Brothers on the couch. Right. You know. I mean, I never, I never knew a drug. I mean, alcohol is a drug that causes violence, uh, yeah. and, and 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 I've talked to cops who say that the major drug that people were high on when they committed crimes when they arrest them was 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 alcohol. Of course, it's that the they, worst, and it's available anywhere. That it, it, they used it to build up courage. Uh, but yeah. I said, how many of you arrested on the influ- under the influence of marijuana? And they said, I can't remember one. Yeah. You know? yeah that was illegal for years and years and years. Uh, well, yeah. And still is in several states, believe it or that's not. That's right. You know? Yeah, that's why I stay away from the flat states. The other ones in the middle, they'll get you every time. Yeah, but no, you're um, uh, in Nevada where you're living now. It's legal, right? Of course, and they have 24-hour dispensaries. <laughs> Believe me, I've used them. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, boy, I'm telling you, that's good. How are the prices changed? It used to be the catch with a seed here. It was like 50 years in the slammer, but uh, not anymore. No, well, it, now you see, uh, in New York, we don't have it yet. What we do have is it's legalized, but you have to have cancer first. Oh, that's that's, yeah. that's no fun. <laughs> you know, uh, and, uh. yeah, and um, uh, so I'm hoping I get cancer real soon so I can get my oh. marijuana. No, 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 just come out here, we'll take care of you. Come now, to the I, desert. Now, I, I, All you, problems can be worked out in the desert. You're talking to somebody who doesn't smoke like he used to. I very seldom ever do. My wife smokes a joint every night, okay? God bless her. Because she, yeah, it, it, it unwinds her from work, and it, sure. it's good that way. And then she always goes, here. Right, uh, that's yeah. what you, that's what you say when you're passing the joint is ear because you're holding ear, your breath. Ear, E A R, ear, And uh, uh, I I turn it down most of the time. Okay, I just okay, you know, uh, basically because I have a show to do and I don't like being high when I work. Uh, that's if, right. I don't like. Yeah, I don't like to go on stage high. I've done it, but uh, yeah, I'd it, go on it, straight. And it, 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 well, my father years ago told me. That because he worked in orchestras, right? He was a he was a violinist. Yeah, he said that he knew musicians who smoked marijuana. In fact, there was one guy. His name was Hotso Casey. I remember Hotso, uh, uh, and Hots uh, uh, Hotso uh, Casey. Well, it was Hots O Casey. Not so it was Hots. Okay, okay. Hots okay. Hots, 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 Hots used to have his his uh, marijuana. He grew it himself on a divider strip on the El Camino Real. <laughs> Yeah. And he said the reason he did it there was the city came by every now and then and watered it for him. Oh, that's <laughs> lovely. God bless him. Yeah, and Hotso really, really loved his pot. He smoked it a lot. In fact, I remember we were on vacation. and at the, well, My father was playing like up in Lake County. So they have a lot of they had a lot of uh, places where they had orchestras and stuff, and so we were up there for a couple of weeks. And so I used to go out to the pool and everything. And and one day uh, I saw a, a, like a b- book of matches or something. And I, as a kid, I just soaked them with water, and it turned out it was Hotso's stash, and he Uh-oh. was so <laughs> mad, and I didn't know what I had done. But my father said, "Don't ever do that again." Hotso loves his cigarettes. Yeah. Uh, uh, but anyway, my father told me that he, you know, he knew a lot of musicians who who smoked marijuana, and they thought it made them play better. And he said, "I've never heard one who played better on now, marijuana." They might have enjoyed playing more on it, but it doesn't make you play better, or maybe worse. But I don't know. Or you thought you were playing better, but he yeah. said so. So I was always turned off to it when I was working. I would make sure that I never, I never did it. You know. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. And and so when she ha- it goes Ear, uh, to me, I go no thanks. You know, maybe on the weekend I'll do it. The latest thing that I've done, I did for a while, was it helped me to sleep. So every night before I went to sleep, I would take a toke off some pot and go to sleep. Uh-huh. You know. Yep, uh-huh. it works. I also watch a Paulie Shore video that puts me right out. Yeah, so, that puts uh, you right out too. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Whatever happened? To, whatever happened to Paulie Shore? That's a good. Question. I think he's. Uh, I think he's touring around, going, "Hey, remember me? Yeah, that was yeah. big twenty five years ago." So yeah. I don't know what he's doing, but uh, yeah. don't don't do it in front of me. Yeah, now that his mother's dead, he doesn't get any gigs. So uh, <laughs> he doesn't need to. <laughs> he doesn't need to do anything. I don't think. Yeah, actually, he did pretty well, didn't he? He did quite all right, and I think he had dough to begin with. So uh, I don't think he has to worry. He didn't have to. He, I don't think he's I, going. How am I going to pay the light bill? I don't think he was that terrible. I saw a couple of his movies, and I saw one I, uh, where he was married to a farmer's daughter or something. Or it was oh, boy, son-in-law. I son-in-law. That. And I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. You know, it was funny. Okay. I give him credit where credit's due. Yeah. But try to watch Jury Duty. It came on TV once. It was so bad, even though you press the little thing and it tells you what the movie's about. It said, this movie is, much, is very avoidable. Don't watch it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they yeah. said not even to watch the movie. So oh, I, I tried watching it, but I couldn't get through too much of it. It was pretty bad. Would you say he had a brief career? He had, he had one in the 90s. Yeah, he was huge in the 90s. He was huge, huge in the 90s, but it was a brief career. It was only spanned yeah, a couple it, of years. I, I don't know. What, I don't remember. Like maybe, you know, he was on MTV in the late 80s. Yeah, and then he did the movies in the '90s, and then I think by '95 he took a rest. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I don't know. I didn't. I never really followed him. I saw him at the comedy store a lot, but uh, I never really followed the old boy's career. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but so you know, I mean, uh, that uh, I, uh, you know. But anyway, getting back to uh, uh, television and how bad it was. Well, how do we get from television to marijuana? <laughs> well, they go well together. No, but I know I, mean, that. I, know, I, I know how Paulie Shore got into the equation, but uh, that's what happens when you talk. Like I started off by saying hi, Stephen, and you mentioned <laughs> sh- high chaperone. And then we right into the high chaperone. And then we talked we to, off to the races from there. Off to TV, but then how do we get from? Oh, I was talking about how media can can set the. Uh, uh, the, the stereotype for things. And you, we were talking about Dragnet and that LSD episode because that would be the key LSD episode for st- hitting, oh, creating yeah. a stereotype that's it, that's it. In, the, uh, uh, in America's minds because at that time, Dragnet was a very popular show. And here it comes uh-huh. on and the sky is high on LSD, the newest fad <laughs> drug that you know uh, Jack Webb decided to exploit. And uh, he, they do this whole thing about this kid. Oh man, I'm really high. What was his name? Blue yeah. or something? What was Blue, his? Blue boy. Blue boy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the interesting thing was Jack Webb was a big jazz buff. In fact, he was married to Julie London, yeah. the jazz singer, and he had a lot of friends in jazz. And a lot of those guys partook. So I'm surprised. But he hated the hippies when they partook. So well, I, I guess it was okay see, when the jazz guys did it, but not not the hippies. I don't know what Jack Webb's politics were. You know, I mean, he did marry a jazz singer. He did do shows like P- movies and TV shows like Pete Kelly's Blues, which was yep. all about music. Right. Uh, and, and I never could figure out exactly if he if he believed in what he was saying on Dragnet or it was all for dramatic purposes. <laughs> it seemed to be like a lecture in every episode, especially when the drug episodes are on. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the object of the drink is to have a couple of drinks and feel good. The object of the smoke marijuana is to smoke as much until you don't know who you are anymore. Well, uh, nobody told me that. So, yeah. But uh, <laughs> you got to keep smoking until you think you're in the fifth dimension. No, I never. Oh, uh, yeah. No, uh, really. You gotta have a few pits and I relax. Oh, no, no, that's what I've seen. In that's my not what I see, man. I, yeah. I've seen kids ending up dead or wishing they were after smoking two hits of a joint. Dun, 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 dun. I'm glad he wasn't my father. That's all I can say. Yeah, well, I uh, again, I wonder. You know, you know where he started, Jack Webb? Was in San Francisco. Oh, uh, what? oh did he start from there? There was a t- radio station. They had uh, uh, KNBC in San Francisco, which later became KNBR. Uh-huh. Uh, because L.A. wanted... L.A.'s station for... NBC was KLAC, and they wanted that to uh-huh. be KNBC, so they changed the call letters and stuff. But anyway, uh-huh. it was KNBC in San Francisco. Uh, my father used to play there a lot. Uh, I worked there when I did uh, a show for Channel 44, and the the old radio studio was still there, the big, the big audience studio with the sponsors' uh-huh. booths and the control room and everything. Still there. Uh, and... Uh, he worked out of there doing a show called Pat Novak for Hire. Uh-huh. And that's where he started his radio career. Uh-huh. And, and Pat Novak for Hire, if you ever listened to it, was a lot like Dragnet. 
You know, it was oh, really? kind of the precursor <laughs> to it. And then he did the, what what was different about Dragnet was the way in which the actors acted. They always acted kind of really low key. Yeah. yeah. I guess that's the way it is. Tell me again. Tell uh, me the facts, just the facts. Uh, yeah. Yes, man. Yeah, again, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, very monotone. The the and the actors uh, who played opposite him were doing the same thing. You know, it was yeah. so it all kind of was kind. Of, you know what it was? It was phony natural. Yeah, <laughs> it, was a, it was a it was a rhythm. Yeah, so it, a it, monotone it, dull rhythm and the theme song and his whole thing and so it it was something that could be parodied too. Stan Freeberg did a great oh, parody yeah. on it. And uh, and so that's why it became so popular. And then then it went off the air, and then it came back as Dragnet seventy seven or something like that. And yeah. uh, they they he kept that going. He took over. Do you know that Jack Webb took over Warner Brothers Television? He was put in charge. Oh, of really? It. And for a while, that. all the shows coming out of there were like Dragnet. There was a show called Emergency with Julie I that. With, with Julie Emergency, London, Adam Twelve. Julie London was in Emergency. Uh, that's right. Adam Twelve, he, that's his ex-wife. That's a good sport. Yeah. So uh, uh, it, it, you know, it was. Uh, uh, oh, by the way, who did who did uh, who did she? Didn't she? I think she married after Jack Webb, Bobby Troop, didn't she? That's right. And Jack Webb cast them both in Emergency. Th- that's that's like, right. You know, he was cool with it. So yeah. I don't care if you're fucking my wife. In fact, I put down my TV show. That's how much respect for me I have for you. <laughs> <laughs> You can pull my wife all you want as long as you do a good job acting. I'll keep working you. <laughs> and Bobby Troop wrote a, a one big record, one big song. That was about it. I can't. Can you name any other Bobby Troop songs besides? I couldn't name you one note of his music, just like I couldn't name you one Peter Lemon Jello. Well, song. no, you could name you could name Route sixty six. Oh, did he write that? Yeah, I did he, not know that, that was his big. That was the song he wrote. That you know, Bobby Troop, author of Route sixty six. I did not know he wrote that. How if about you that? ever planned to try clean that when the Stones did it, my God. Yeah. So uh, he got his name off of that. And then he married uh-huh. Julie London. By the way, you know, I listen to some people don't know what we're talking about. I, 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 know, <laughs> I know, kids, if you're listening, we're losing you right now. You know? Oh, we lost you when I said the high chaparral. It was yeah. over the first minute. But Julie London, I went back and listened to a lot of her stuff and watched a lot of her TV stuff. She was good. Oh, she sure was, yeah. She was very good. And all she was was an actress who decided to start singing. Yeah, but and, she could sing, and she was not She was very easy on the eyes on top of that. So. Y- uh, yeah, she was a very good-looking woman. And, yep. and uh, uh, Or as we call it in the present parlance, a piece of ass. Uh, oh, a piece of ass, or how they say in the L.A., a hot property, a real hot property. Yeah, now, wait a minute, can we use the term... Piece of ass anymore? Good, great piece of ass. I haven't heard that. Would be uh, with the whole Me Too thing. I think you just say she's a handsome woman. That's all you can say. She's Otherwise, a, get in trouble. She's a, a great part of the donkey. I don't know. They, I, you know. A piece of the the northern a piece of the northern end of the south. Well, saying donkey. somebody's a great piece of ass is really a compliment, isn't it? Yeah, but you can get in trouble for it now. Yeah, if we were famous. Our careers would be ruined right now. <laughs> Thank God, there's You'd no. No woman in this room, so the Me Too movement can't come after me for using the term yeah, piece right. of ass. That's right. Otherwise, he'd be in big trouble, boy. No more. <laughs> we'd be waiting for the bus with Kevin Spacey and Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, but why did you, any of you, go out and marry your wife? Because at one point, you thought she was a great piece of ass. So, there you, you know, go. All I mean, attraction is starts out physical. So. Gee, we can't be guys anymore, can we? We've had that wrong ah. from us. We can't, we can't talk amongst each other in, in these kinds of terms. You know, yeah, I know you can't hang out on the corner with the boys drinking a yuho going, hey, look at the gazongas on that tomato. Va, 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 voo. Now you get in trouble. Goddamn ACLU. What I loved was you mentioned gazongas. What I love is there were probably you didn't even have to know. You could make up a word for tits and you knew people knew what you were talking about. Yeah, look at those baboombas. Hey, we look at the blob of the blobs on her. You know, and everybody oh goes, oh, God, yeah. Check out the road cones on that skirt. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Long God of the days. Uh, you could use street slang. Yeah, you can't do that anymore. Today, we have to be completely proper about it. You know? Yeah, I know. And, you I, and, 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 and what we should, I mean, I've always respected women, you know. Yeah, uh, you know, me I, too. And yet... Uh, uh, and I, I always was bothered by guys who would stand there and go look at the gazongas on that bitch. 
You know, yeah. I'm, I'm using <laughs> these know, terms. Hey, baby, come here, she's a lesbian. It, yeah, but I mean, you know, I, I just, I, I, I always was bothered by that. I would sometimes call guys on it. You know, oh, okay. you're being dis- right. you're being disrespectful. You know, but nevertheless, I just think that in a way they socially were being guys with guys, and I think, yeah, you know, there was something. I got to tell you this. Uh, I got bothered. When all of a sudden there were like men only organizations and uh-huh. the women suddenly wanted to be able to join the men only associations. Uh-huh. And I remember a book that came out about men in groups and that men as a sex would uh, get together and have guy things that they did. And some of these things were these organizations. You know, they were for guys because it was guys who wanted to be collegial, okay, that if for lack of a better term, with other guys. Yeah. <laughs> and, yet, and yet, all of a sudden, you know, here come the women. We want in. You know, they went. They yep. McSorley, remember McSorley's on, uh, in the... Uh, oh, sure I do, yeah. I drank in there once in 1975. Yeah, and they would only let guys in. And finally, yep. at one point, uh, Steinem and a bunch of her ladies came along and said, we want in, and we're going to go to court on this if you don't let us in. So they said, okay, we'll start letting women in. And then they didn't come. They didn't want in. They didn't actually come to it. They just wanted the right to come in. They just wanted to prove a point. We want to get trashed <laughs> with everyone else at this and, point. And so what's, you know, now you can get trashed, and they didn't come over. What's so bad about a bar that only serves guys so that guys can talk with guys as guys? And Nothing not, wrong with that. And, not, and then these broads want to come into the locker room and, you know, it's all topsy-turvy. I don't know what's going on No, anymore. No, but, you know, I mean, why can't guys have their own little collegial space anymore? They, they should. Like, women should, too. Like, anyone who's, well, you know, any little group, whatever. Well, I, yeah, I, I you know, I think women do. I think it's called Bloomingdale's. Uh, <laughs> Bloomingdale's, there you go. <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> But bronze uh, only with a backwards ass. On so the I would defend the idea of a guys only thing if there's something that's only for guys, because yeah. guys want to be in a group, you know. So I, yep, no, I, I am bothered by those places where they kept women out because uh, you know, and they could really use the facilities. They needed the facilities. Yeah, uh, you know, you can't talk a good football game with women around, or you know, talk about you know uh, powdering your balls, or you know, things like men like to talk about it. You know, yeah, yeah. So I mean, drinking, I, a, drinking a Peel's beer call, and they're going to the game. You know, call me old fashioned, but I think uh, you know, guys should have the right to hang out with other guys and be guys if they want to. I never enjoyed that, by the way. I never enjoyed yeah. that, but I'm defending it. I defend it too. I, I, I've always preferred mixed company myself, but uh, you know, if guys want to be with guys, let them go be with guys. I've, I don't I've, mean the, I've, uh, I've preferred, the West Hollywood way. I've preferred, to, to, to. I've, I've preferred to hang out with women. Me too. Because I found them smarter than guys. Uh-huh. And I always liked intelligence. And, and I found that guys would get stupid if they were in a group. That's why I never wanted oh. to be in a group with other guys. Alex, why yeah, are you defending true. guys being able to be in groups yet you don't want to be in that group? Because <laughs> I understand why it exists. You know, because they're stupid. Yeah, they can <laughs> hang out if they, with other guys if they want, but uh, you know, I prefer just mixed company at different viewpoints and all that stuff. So yeah. that's just me. So anyway, Actually, I prefer to be alone most of the time. I, I want to join a leave me the fuck alone club where a guy can just be with himself. In what few minutes we have left. Uh, getting back oh. to TV in the golden age, I was saying the back other night TV. that the, fuck the golden age. If that was the golden age, then this is the platinum age. Cause, <laughs> cause it sucks now. There's a lot of good TV. Really? Oh, man. I, I just watch the old shows or nothing or the news. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, this... I just, I'm just so off TV. I, mean, I like YouTube, though, because all kinds of weird stuff on there. Yeah, well, like our show. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Just the other day, I watched the debate between Gore Vidal and Roy Cohn from 1977. Oh my God. That was fun. You know, it's funny about Roy Cohn. I mean, I debated him once on the Barry Farber show here in New York. Oh, you meant, oh my God, you're in the same room with that creepy bastard. Well, oh. you know, every I saw a show on um, uh, Get Me, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, oh, God. My, my, uh, Roger Stone. And Roger Stone was a pal of. Roy Cohn's, 
But somebody in the being interviewed said, Roy Cohn was the most evil man I was ever in the presence of. Yeah. And, oh, and that's what I've said. I said, I've never met the devil until I met Roy Cohn. You know, you somebody look, else said they had, they had lunch with him. He said it was like eating lunch with the devil. Like, like he yeah, was a, yeah, a no, creepy it, lizard face, son of a bitch. It, yes, and the eyes, they were dead eyes. They're yeah. dead. They were they were evil. They were like lizard eyes, uh, horrible eyes. I walked oh, out of that yeah. interview. I was chilled. I literally was chilled. Ugh. Like I said, to, I said to him, you know, you were responsible for the execution of the Rosenbergs, and he said, yeah. And if I had a chance, I'd do it again. And he looked at me with these evil shark thing. eyes, saying that, you know. Yep. Oh my God. Oh. Anyway, we've been all over Gary the place with this today, but geez, you're fun to talk to, Stephen Pearl. Well, wow, thank you so much. We covered a lot of things today. The High Shop Morrell and Jack Webb and Paulie Sewer and Roy Toad. It went all over the place. And, the way and, I like and, it. and guys wanting to be guys with guys. That's right. But in a guy way, with guys. Guyly. Guyly way. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Alex. It's always a pleasure, and we'll do it again soon. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet. The Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, and that's uh, that's our good friend uh, Stephen Pearl. Love always talking to him. Love talking to him always. Oh, something like that. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see here. Uh, let me open up the uh, lines here because I'm sure people have stuff they want to talk about. Uh, there are times in this world. Okay, where our lines are open now, so. The lines are now open. Thank you very much, Queenie. Um, um, I declare these lines open. Yes. All right. Anyway, uh, let me see here. Uh, so we had a lot that, hap that happened today, and I, I, but for for a moment, I want to, I, I want to talk while I'm waiting for anybody to call this program, uh, to uh, complain about my Facebook page. Uh, you know, I say something and then all of a sudden people reply to it, which is okay. You're entitled to disagree with me. But then these people start fighting with each other. And what they do is they monopolize the conversation. So it goes like so-and-so says something and something else replies to it. And somebody puts me down and somebody says something else and that's fine. And then all of a sudden somebody says something, somebody says something back to them. Then they say something back to them. And then all of a sudden they're going back and forth in a fight. And they're the only ones uh, on the, uh, at the moment who are, 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 are using the page and they're cluttering it up with their own personal arguments. And I, I really, I really can't stand that. You know, I really can't. Uh, hello, Phil. I guess Phil is there immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? I was listening to your conversation, your recorded conversation. And uh, did you get your pipe bomb today? Did I get my pipe bomb today? No, that's not funny. <laughs> Come on. It's not funny, Phil. Hey, I thought it was. You thought it was funny. It wasn't, though. Yeah, well, isn't it great that, uh, you know, people are caught... People are calling for uh, uh, getting in people's faces and uh, not letting them go to the post office, not letting them eat, uh, not letting them go to the bathroom. And, uh, you know, this, I, I have no idea what you're talking about, Phil. Well, I'm talking about Maxine Waters, Clinton uh, <laughs> and a number of uh, and Barack Obama and a number of other people that received the uh, uh, airzots pipe bombs. They said they were real, but. How, none of them detonated. Oh, of course. You don't believe it. No. Fuck you. No. They blew a couple of them up. Well, yeah. You know, you put them in a truck with a bomb. No, you, uh, they blew them up to make sure they were capable of blowing up, that these were the real thing. The fact that the guy, that they didn't detonate when they were supposed to uh, means the guy built some shitty bombs. But they were meant to hurt people, Phil. Uh, they How can you... Have, you're, you're buying... You're you're really drinking the Kool Aid on this one, Phil. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, uh, let me ask you something. Where was the outrage when Scalise was? Shot? No, no, no. Upper, what about? 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 
hey, uh, you're you're skipping. Uh, you know, when Scalise got shot, boy, you're right they, out of the bag. You don't even say hello. Oh, of course. Well, I figured I'd come right out of the ball. You know, right out of the shoot. Hello. <laughs> oh boy. How you doing? Uh, not good now. Oh well, all right. Then I did my part. You did your part. <laughs> What, yeah. make a complete and utter fool of yourself? No, it, you know. I well, mean, wait a minute. This... Let these other fine, two fine people, is he making a fool of himself? I think so. Whatever. Of course you do. Par for the course, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. But then again, if you were to call into a CRTV program, Phil, you'd be right at fucking home. So, you know. Probably. I'd be making a fool of myself if I called in there. Yeah, Instead well, of... you know. What's a CRTV look... program? What are you talking about? It's uh, Mark Levin or somebody. I've never seen it. What does this guy Trump have to do before people start realizing that he's, you know, I, I don't get it. Hey, do you remember the Muslim bro Brotherhood and how they not uh, uh, and uh, out, uh, the uh, when they marked was it the Muslim Brotherhood? No. What does this it, have to do with any of this, Phil? Look, do you this remember this has when nothing they to do with it into Iraq? Oh, God, it has and, nothing to do with what we're talking about, Phil. It was called the Trojan Horse, and I, I oh, don't oh, you're really you're you're reading all the talking points today. Yeah, the no, it's the what is it? The fake flag or what's the term that's used? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, yeah. it was the was it the Al Qaeda flag? What flag did they use? No, but ISIS. It was ISIS. They marched in uh, to Iraq. They said, "Oh, we're here to help. We're handing out food." Uh, and what, do you, what, sudden, do you, what does this have to do with what went on today, Phil? Well, you said it was it was not funny. You didn't want to talk about it. What you want it? to talk about pipe bombs? Uh, uh, do I want to talk about pipe bombs? I'd like to not have to talk about pipe bombs, but apparently right. we have to. Yes. What if we're okay. talking about pipe bombs? We were talking about the pipe bombs that were sent today, not yesteryear, not the year before that, okay. not during the George W. Bush years, not and during the like failed the Iraq people, campaign. Somebody today. doesn't like Democrats, right? October twenty fourth, two thousand eighteen, like today. Yeah, I think. Let I, me let me I, say this, Phil, and shut yeah. up for a bit while I All say right. it. Okay. Right. We have a president who is a totally irresponsible human being. Okay, he is totally irresponsible because he is charged. Will you listen to me, Phil? He is yes, charged. Okay. I said he's no. he's charged. No, I was asking everybody. Oh, the no. the cumulative. Okay. All right. Uh, the the job of the president is to protect among the probably the biggest thing he's supposed to do is protect the American public. All yes. right. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. 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 And by his actions. He is creating a, 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 what's the word I'm looking at, an air of consent. Yes, go send your pipe bombs, go beat up the reporters, go take care of the press because He's they're terrible. And, and, years, and, and he has a, he ha the one thing you should never do is give somebody a sense of permission to do what went on today and he gives them that sense of permission. Yes, uh, Charlene. I would say, like you know, he gives he gives license to his crazy base of people that believe in him and think that you know all this stuff that he says. They believe that you know the uh, failing New York Times is against him and all this. I mean, look at CNN was attacked, and he doesn't like CNN. And all the uh, people, Democrats, all the people he Obama attacks in his speeches yeah. were the subject of these attacks. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, whether it was Hillary Clinton or Bill Clinton, uh, Barack Obama, uh, Maxine Waters, uh, uh, CNN, uh, uh, CNN. Uh, we could mm -hmm. go on and on. I mean, the, the, uh, and we don't know. And, we, uh, and uh, George Soros. Mm -hmm. uh, all these people what? are people who uh, uh, Trump has by name uh, gone after in his speeches. Rather than leave the past behind and move forward, he tends to sit in the past and try and get even with all these people he disagrees with. And he gives a sense of permission to someone out there who would do something like this. And the fact that tonight he didn't do anything to, to, to mitigate it, he simply blamed the press for creating the element that created 
the the uh, the uh, uh, heir of uh, of well, whatever. Alex, in, his, in his minor defense, he did queef out a few uh, a few sentences of saying. Uh, 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 um, did you um, see? Did you see him? Did you see him? He was. Better. He that's was. It. That's all he said. Did you see him? He was reading it. So no, he reads that's everything. Even worse. Uh, no, but, I didn't see. But it. I can't tonight, stand to look at him for two seconds. Tonight, in his uh, uh, in his speech, minutes. in his speech, uh, no, he basically it. blamed the press for the bombs. That's that basically what he see, did. I don't oh, remember. Why, you know what would be nice if he me. said, you know something, maybe the rhetoric I've been doing may give some people a sense of permission. And if you think that what I say gives you a sense of permission, you're wrong. And I'm going to pull back my rhetoric a bit uh, because I don't oh, want we'll people see. to feel that this kind of behavior is acceptable. But he didn't do I'll that, that Phil. He didn't have the guts to do that. He's a Want fucking to... coward. I think you got selective hearing. Because I heard him say something totally different. No, you heard him say, what happened today was terrible. We're going to put the full weight of the law against it. And that what, was what? it. But later on in a speech, he blamed the bombings on the press. That's the selective hearing you have, Phil. You didn't hear the second speech. I heard the first speech, and that was enough. He made... He made uh, he made no Phil, that he was going that the country needed to come together. Do you remember that part of the speech? Not that, under him, that, I can't. Yeah, that the country needs to come together. Yeah, well, what's he doing to bring it together? He's going to use the full weight of the. Oh no, no, that's to, bullshit, Phil. That's bullshit. Well, he, he, he said what he, he what said. He, do? he said what he had to say, and then Please. later on in his speech to, to his a acolytes, to his uh, uh, to his minions. He said, you know, it's really the press's fault that these bombs went off. They brought this on themselves. Uh, you know. You didn't hear that, did you, Phil? No, I didn't. Okay. Uh, so the, uh, now let me ask you this. Do you, have you heard a message from people like uh, uh, Maxine Waters and, uh, uh, and that uh, one you like, Pelosi? Ha have you heard uh, similar kinds of things coming no, out of their no, mouth? No, not at all. Well, I have. Well, that's uh, your selective hearing. Maxine Waters said that you should uh, uh, get in their faces, don't let them go out to dinner, and, and so forth. Now, now there's a very... That is, that's a little different than, hey, I really want to applaud you for for uh, for uh, uh, head bumping a uh, or body bumping a, a, a guy from the press. Arresting which is a, actual a, physical uh, violence that he was condoning. Now, uh, no, you didn't answer that, Phil. Well, I, I, you know, who got body bumped? That woman by Corey Lewandowski? No. This was a guy who was running for uh, for Senate up in uh, Montana. Oh, oh he, he slammed the press guy. Yeah, yeah. Body and the slammed. president made fun of that and said, he's my kind of guy for doing that. Well, you know, the president is very has a very sarcastic personality. The president, has, the president has a duty to the country, a duty to protect it and to make sure people do not come in harm's way and he does not have in his uh, in what he does the right to give a sense of permission at any time well we'll see how he protects from the caravans that are coming no no no, no. what about ism what about ism what about ism what about ism well, we'll see how he protects the caravans might not even get here okay but because george soros might run out of money for them right Probably. Well, he'll he'll put them on express buses instead Bill, of making them walk. Yes, Bill, yes, Charlene. Do you believe that the Democrats are paying the Hondurans? Because that's what I heard he said now. The Democrats are paying the Hondurans to come through Mexico to come and cross the border. That's okay. The new one that he's Charlene, have, have you looked at the people that were coming, uh, that were walking in the in the heat? Well, you know what? I could go upstairs and look at my husband. Look, look, look in the camera. Charlene, Charlene, look in the camera. Look in the camera. You're not looking in Sorry, the camera. But look. I happen to have a Mexican right here. I put my money where my mouth but, is. When he's I, in I take in an immigrant. Hey, when he, yeah, really. When, he, when he's in 100 degree heat, walking with abs absolutely no... Of, of hundreds and hundreds of miles, do you think he'd develop a sweat? Nobody was sweating in that crowd. 
there were people that were uh, that were wearing these green safety oh, vests Phil. to show that they were in the front of the Phil. front of the line. Uh, I, I never uh, thought you would take the, your talking points from Alex Jones. I, I tell you, I don't watch Alex Jones. I don't even. Think well, he's you're taking anymore. your talking points from him. Well, because no, that's I, what I he's saying on my own. Uh, you oh, know, gee, they're, look they're at so them. Obvious. Look at them. They're not sweating enough. They're not. Hey, uh, no, uh, well, I, I, I would think they probably are because it's hot down there. Yeah, but you know, if, oh, you, well, if they are, yeah. how come their shirts were were clean as if they and just got? And we never got landed on the moon either, Phil. We never landed on the moon. It was just a, a stage setting. Look, or whatever. when you're talking, you don't have to talk into the microphone. Sorry, Charlie. but you he's can got me mad. Look into the camera. Yes, Good. hello, hello. Uh, oh, here's Renee. Renee, you want hey. a piece of him? <laughs> no, I. He just it just you got Phil, dude. I this is I can't talk to Republicans anymore. I it yeah, just yeah, not, yeah. It's just not. I, I agree with you. Well, I Democrats agree. don't talk to Republicans. They just we, wish we they would go because, away. Because your morals and values are nothing but verbal vaporware. Well, this, to you, that's all you hear. Uh, okay, where? so you said you had a health care plan. For eight years, we had to listen to you people say, health care bad for eight years. So where's your fucking plan? You've been in charge for two months, or two years now. Where's your brilliant better than life health care plan it was much better before obamacare i was paying a third of what no, no it isn't a question of what you were paying it was a question of whether that, other people were better. getting that covered that was better no. is it yeah, was it better the whole was, idea was it better is, for pre-existing conditions to be de decided upon to not be viable for people no is it was it yes or no well, probably what do you mean no, of course yes not. or no no it wasn't but so what the uh, fuck is well, Trump wants uh, pre-existing uh, conditions to be covered. Yeah, he said that before. Uh, that's so bullshit, Phil, start? because they all, all, all these guys who are running for Senate right now and Republicans are saying, well, we, we're for, we're for uh, doing away with pre, uh, of, of rather uh, supporting uh, pre-existing conditions. And yet in Congress, they're all working on bills to do away with it. These very same senators. Oh, yeah. Well, if they may work on a bill, but you know what? If Trump won't sign no, it. No, what I'm saying is, oh, he'll sign it. He'll sign he it. They're saying anything they can to win right now. They, oh, yeah. yeah and and after can, they yeah. win, they'll do anything they fucking please, Phil. But that's the point. You said you had... So he didn't come up with a plan before he was elected. The Republicans had no plan before he was elected. And we've been waiting for two years for you to have a plan. Where is yeah, it? There's a good plan. They're going to round up all the Democrats and they're going to put them in those camps. Yeah. And so well, where we, are your Phil, jobs? Phil, what answer a question with an answer, okay. not a joke. Okay. Okay. One uh, of the easiest things to do would be to put a whole bunch of Americans to work doing infrastructure projects. Because uh, we need we need more mean, trains. We don't like high speed and roads. Well, I understand yeah. that boom, that's boom, what boom. he asked for. No, no. Where is it? Where is that? Those jobs would be not cheap to implement, but they would be easy to implement. And well, not one did. He you has an idea. Is he repealing, Renee, trying to repeal Obamacare for the 50th time? He, he has an idea. He, there was this guy that said that he was going to have all these shovel-ready jobs. Well, Trump is waiting for the shovels to show up. No, no, we're waiting for Trump for the shovel-ready jobs. He promised those shovel-ready jobs to the American people. Oh, he needs to go out and get those oh, shovel-ready jobs. The, it, Trump has a shovel-ready job. It's all the shit he's shoveling. <laughs> I think it was Obama that promised all the shovel-ready jobs. No, that's all the shit we have to shovel come uh, 2021, Alex. No, oh, and by right. the way, by the way, how about that market correction? Oh yeah, boy. Yeah, I've been yeah and you're gonna need more than a shovel. Have you been taking a hit? Have you been taking a hit, Renee? Goddamn, uh... Now, what happened when uh, when the World Trade Center was attacked? Was there a market correction? Uh, what you it know? Shut down. It yeah. doesn't matter because it was based in New Jersey, didn't have the backup for New York City. Right. And so what, what when immediately after what, 9 11 Phil, Phil, Phil stop with your what aboutism. Yeah. You know, it's always well, what about what stop. about the time? What about this? What about when uh, when Caesar uh, invaded when, Rome? 
when there is that's the only answers you come up with or what about hey all they have they have nothing when there's an action like this you got to expect that there's going to be some sort wait of wait a minute wait a minute there was no act there was an action today but the market has gone down almost 2000 points in 2 weeks uh, the entire 200 and there weren't bombs for the last 2 weeks yeah. phil yeah. there is all of and the by the way the stock went down today because of the reports by a couple of companies that's the okay. reason it went down uh, all you don't it's a reaction to uh, no, the pipe no 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 no, it was a reaction to the, some of the reports that came out from some of the major companies. Nothing's ever good enough. Brian was up first. Sorry. Yes, Brian. Well, I was just going to echo briefly what uh, Renee was saying, what you were saying, Renee. Uh, all of 2018's gains have been lost. That's it. And Thank number you. two, well, I would also say, uh, as far as what about as I'm concerned, I'll throw one on my own. What about the time I told everyone? Limit. on this panel yeah a week and a half ago or so but this could be uh, with all the other previous losses we've sustained in the stock market this could pi finally be the onslaught of the recession the great a new great recession possible depression that people have been talking about and uh, furthermore I'll throw my hat my ideological hat in the ring and saying I hope this is the onslaught of the new recession and depression if for no other reason than to wake people up to the notion that all we're playing with here is funny money to begin with, and we're finally losing funny money, and we have no other. Well, ways unfortunately, with, I have a lot of that. I have, I, 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 I have a lot of that funny money in the market because I don't want to keep it in a bank where it's not doing anything, and I it's don't want to put and I don't want to put it in my mattress no. because, uh, quite frankly, it's lumpy enough as it is already. Charlie, so is, may I see your nails? This is what happens <laughs> when uh, socialism. Leave runs it out to women. Leave, leave, leave it to nails. women. Show me your nails. No, uh, what happens? <laughs> capitalists have nothing to lie to us about anymore. Okay, so I have to have a small conversation with you guys because I talked to the financial guy. I am moving some money out of the United States just because I can't take this craziness. But number two, he see, I hate to say this. I wish this. you luck in that endeavor. <clears throat> oh, thank you. I hate to say this, but. They said they said they think that it looks like it's going to be a soft landing for the for this recession. So I'm what just recession? repeating what this guy what so the one where that's coming. Okay. The soft one that's Jeff, Jeff seems to be uh, wait, wait, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff seems to be nodding his head in agreement. Jeff, I, I heard the same thing yesterday. Really? Damn. Yeah, because after what you said, what Renee said last night about how she's taking all of her money and going to Europe and, and Canada. <laughs> I'm not taking I, it all, but I'm well, whatever. You to live be. fat in I another country. <laughs> here today, and everybody went, huh? <laughs> oh, that was the answer I got. Yeah, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, cash mine in and get Bitcoin. So uh, your wife doesn't, th but see, your wife took all, a lot of her money out of the out of the actual stock market, right? And she set it aside. Yeah. Where is she going to do with it? Well, you know, get good old two percent. No, two oh, she's in the cash position. <laughs> but you know, it's it's the time to uh, wait for the poison to be bad. No, enough. I agree with that. Yeah. So I, she I, doesn't think moving the money to Canada is all that great. I knew a guy in the. Uh, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Charlene times. had her hand up. Oh. Oh. You know, I don't. I don't have any stock. Although I did work for Merrill Lynch, you know, Ooh. some, uh, you know, stock stuff. I did, you know, a little bit. I have no stock though. I wish I did, but uh, I heard that like last year taxes were going to be really good, and it was for me personally. You know, <laughs> but I heard now that oh. this year we're supposed to see a, a, you know, like some sort of a thing that's going to happen to us where. We're going to hate Trump for whatever he did with that tax thing that he did last year. Yeah, especially in New Jersey, that? where no, no. I am, because you can't deduct your mortgages anymore and stuff like that, you know. I so here's, here's the thing. You can't deduct your mortgage? The tax breaks that Trump gave out to us regular people were temporary. I do not remember when they're supposed to expire, but I do know that the one percenters got a permanent tax break and we only got a temporary tax break. So I, and I don't remember and when the I did date. stock work, alternative minimum taxes where the rich people 
yeah. you know, get get around stock stuff. They, they make did. A lot of money. It's gone. It costs a lot of money. The alternative minimum tax. You want well, to avoid okay. it. There's two points to this. One is the alter the guy in Southern California, and I got exactly correct. He's completely correct. There is no more AMT, which is alternative minimum tax. The only issue to this is, and I want everybody to hang on to their chairs. This fund had a lot of money going into it and was used in a lot of good ways. The people next door to us in Willow Glen, one year, one year, one year taxes, they had to pay the United States government $90,000 in one year because of the AMT, because they sold stock. So that fund was huge, and now it's completely wiped out. I want to know who's going to get hurt by it being completely wiped out. I don't know that it's completely wiped out. Mm -hmm. I looked it up because see, that was my point, and that was the guy from Southern California, who I would like to say I'm sorry to, and he should call back in. But the AMT, just like he said, is completely gone. Yeah, it is. What gone. do you mean by yeah. soft landing, though? Uh, it so, won't be a bad. Uh, it won't be as gut wrenching as the last recession. Oh, it'll be mild. Soft yeah, landing is like mild. One, right? it, it won't be as hard as the last one, but it it will. It's still coming. It's still going to be painful, like Jack said, but it isn't going to be as hard as what happened to us before. Do you, you ever hear of what goes answer, up right? most come down? Yeah. And, oh, and it, God, we, that's the trickle down theory. Or something. No, no, it has no, nothing to do no, with that. No, no, he's he's going. What my, what goes up must come down. No, it doesn't necessarily have to go down precipitously. Or yes. let's say fair, right? You know, Som sometimes it does. Well, you uh, know? Uh, it, it's very nice of you to sit there and say that, but I have money in stock and you don't. You know, <clears throat> I, I don't want it to be precipitous. I'd like well, it. Well, my I, ex and kids do. You, you know, I, I don't like it to be precipitous. Oh. All right. Yeah. You know. So. so that's good news, but it's just a guess. So please be aware something's going to happen, but please also be aware that that's, that's his best guess. And he well, we all know, we all know that the, we've got a president, but this shouldn't happen because we have a president that was so good with money. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, you you, can, be, later, you can be sarcastic, but he can't. Is that right? I, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm, not I'm speaking to the, the truth, States, Phil. Though. Thank you, Brian. He was a lousy, he was a lousy, terrible businessman. And if he hadn't involved himself into some <laughs> dubious <clears throat> deeds in order to keep out of the poorhouse, uh, he would have shown exactly what a bad businessman he was. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, as far as I'm concerned, he's doing the right thing why, now. Why won't he show us his taxes, Phil? Uh, eventually, somebody's going to see him. No, uh, I, he, he doesn't have to. I, I, I should live so long. No, no, no. He doesn't, and that's the point. He doesn't have to, and we need to drill this point into everyone who isn't a goddamn Republican. If it isn't a law, the Republicans are not going to follow the procedure. Meaning that if it's just a gentleman's agreement, mm -hmm. they don't give a fuck. Well, he's, uh, you know, he's not your regular guy. And he's not going to go by the same rules that other people did. And that's your excuse, that's your excuse for every piece of bad behavior this fucking cocksucker involves himself in <laughs> is to say that he's, he's, he's a rebel. He's a rogue. He's Just not, like, he's not all like all the other politicians. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's not like all the other politicians. He doesn't care if he does something illegal. Uh, uh, yeah. Sometimes when someone engages in asshole -ish behavior, it's because they're a fucking asshole, not because they're a rebel. Very good, very good. Very good observation. <laughs> yeah, oh, thank you. Let's get back to the bombs today. Perfect. Let's get back to this whole bomb thing. Um you oh, know, we're back. Okay. Yeah. No. I mean, I think it. I think it's something that people want to talk about, and it. It. It's. It's bothering us greatly because, uh, it, you know, th this is the kind of this this element this uh, this uh, atmosphere that's been created in this country has brought about uh, brought this about. Okay. Plain and simple, it's brought it about. And okay. So, go ahead. Is this a modern day civil war? 
No, it's Oops. not a modern day civil war. Okay, read that. So this is something that I printed off my printer that sits right over there. If I sent this to the FBI, they would be able to find me because within the ink, within all of this, there's details to who that printer. That printer was registered and it was sold to me. So if this, if anything was printed, i.e. those labels that I saw, there's a label to and a label from, those things will be trackable and we will I've never, have I have never heard that. Oh, isn't yeah. that, isn't oh, yeah. that a set of instructions for an Ikea cabinet? Does she uh, mean that we're yeah, going to find the bomber? These are my Lutron products. We'll find the bomber. <laughs> like, uh, they'll find out who it was? Yeah. I, I think that they'll find, uh, because it didn't explode, they'll find either some fingerprints, fingerprints. or some DNA or something that will lead them to uh, to this bomber. I think and, they, uh, I think they, I think they, they, that they I th want, they'll more, tell more us. If I have a feeling if it doesn't, then they won't. More details real. to come. That's what it is. I right? think they uh, they exploded a couple of them, if I'm not mistaken. At least that was the word. Uh, but the uh, one the one at CNN, I think they kept intact, or they're trying to keep intact. Yes, they did. Yeah, uh, they did. So they can get the. The only problem is, is that assumes that all of these were sent by mm -hmm. the same people, and what we know about terrorists is their modular shit. And so each bomb might have been made by somebody different and sent to those places. Right. Almost by almost all keeping, of them were in New York. By only keeping one, that makes things a little, or only keeping a couple, that makes things... Uh, Trump's fine. trying to cover it up. But uh, it, it's funny that most of them were all uh, in New York and uh, in Westchester and uh, New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, th I, you know, I don't know. Well, all of them? No, no, Phil. Out. No, oh, Phil. They weren't. Yeah. They weren't. Well, uh, the only one that <laughs> only was two of them. Only, only two of them. Only two of them were in the New York area. One was in Chappaqua, where the Clintons right. live. Right. Well, one was at CNN, which is a great deal, many miles away. The rest, <laughs> there was one down in, uh, what is it, down in Pennsylvania Katona. something? Where was Soros? Where, where Soros oh, lives. Katona's in Westchester. No, it's not. It's, no, it's not. Katona's in Westchester. I don't I think so. I don't know. I, 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 I thought he lived in uh, the, the it's, map. It looked like it was down no, in Pennsylvania somewhere. No, it's like Bedford. Uh, uh, New, it, it's, it's in, Katona's in New York. Well, there was one. Look, that, that was, no, that was There was Soros. one that was sent Soros. to Florida. I think Phil is correct. Uh, one that was uh, sent to Florida. One, one, well, for did one. that hurt, Jeff? Was that pain? Did your heart just like... <laughs> <did> <laughs> I'm alive. <laughs> is the hospital call your doctor's office is calling you and saying what just happened? That's right. Oh, he has that thing that kicks in like yeah. Yeah, yeah Katona it starts with a K. Uh, it's it's in Westchester. Okay, but uh, where was uh, near, where was there was another one down in that area? Near Brewster. Huh? It's near Brewster, I think. Yeah, but these weren't all close, you know. Well, hey, you know. Uh, Chappaqua and Katona, I can throw a stone from Katona to Chappaqua. Okay, so they were, were they, they were blah, based, some of it was based because that's where the people lived. Now, what was the weird one that was sent to somebody for somebody else? Like it was sent to Nancy Pelosi? Oh, that was, it was sent to, it was sent to uh, 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 the uh, form, Jeffrey, Hol uh, uh, Jeffrey Holder. Um, uh, <laughs> Eric Holder. Eric Holder. But since the um, since the return address was uh, what's her name Debbie Wasserman Schultz, yeah. uh, which all the all of them had her return address, uh, they found they couldn't deliver it to the address on that envelope, so they sent it back to Debbie Wasserman <laughs> Schultz. Oh, nice. hey, uh, who was yeah. the guy? Uh, he used to, I think, be head of the FBI that uh, under Obama that is working at CNN, and he has his office there. And one of them was addressed to him. Well, Brennan, uh, the, 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 Brennan the one, the one it, at Brennan. CNN was addressed to Brennan, but I right. think it was intended to make trouble for CNN. It but just the had... address that they sent it to was the address you Google. When uh, when you're looking for uh, CNN or that well, there whole there are a couple of addresses you can use for CNN. You can just say Columbus Circle, and it will get to them. <laughs> okay, Ten Columbus Circle. Everybody, but you could just say CNN Columbus Circle, and the mail will get to them. Figuring out that 
you know. So that that's what yeah. yeah. At least no one was hurt. That was the first thing that I was. Yeah. For. So congrat. Yeah, and and she's right. So congratulations to the United States Post Office for keeping us safe and for all the follow through from all the other government officials to make sure that we figure out who this person is. But Charlene's right. The procedures seem to work. And thank God for that. Yeah. Well, uh, the way the uh, Secret Service uh, does things is nothing goes directly to the uh, pre to the past presidents. Uh, it's, it's all vetted first before uh, the mail. Uh, before they receive it. Yes. Uh, so. But nevertheless, the bombs were it sent. Still worked. Now, didn't uh, somebody uh, recently try to send some anthrax to, uh, it was either Pence, right. uh, you know, uh, and didn't it get through? And it wasn't anthrax. It wasn't anthrax. Oh. It was like talcum powder. Right. Oh. Yeah. Is that what happened? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he ordered it on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, so yeah. we've got serial. And so why aren't we? Here's the question to the whole panel. Isn't this a terrorist event? Yes, it is. I think so. Of course. Absolutely. Then let's start using that word. Yeah, well, I, 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 they are. I hear uh, the police department, uh, the mayor of New York, uh, Mario Cuomo today, we're all calling it a terrorist event. Excellent. So, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, uh, Brian. Brian. Yeah. Terrorist event. I, uh, Quite my question dovetails with that, ironically enough. Uh, were any post-9-11 measures made to, to legislative measures made to intercept these letter bombs that weren't intercepted with, you know, the way we would have done this in, like, 2000? Oh, good question. Uh, if I, I get the answer I think oh, I'm going to get, I'm going to say that so. this whole Patriot Act bullshit is just that bullshit. No, I, yeah. I think we can solidly say that Everybody in this system that just got tapped to do these bomb, but to do this, has been upgraded since 9/11. I think all of the all of the United States government agencies that were involved have changed their procedures. We, we and, haven't. And, let me put it this way: uh, fortunately or unfortunately, if you travel and have been pestered by it, uh, we didn't haven't let our guard down since 9/11. We did let our nine our guard down after the original bombing of the World Trade Center in '93. Uh, yeah, yeah, we still got very laxed. You know, when they, we had air hijackings uh, for the longest time, uh, we got really tough, and then we got loose again. But then we had 9/11, and I don't think we've really loosened up much since then. If anything, uh, we've even gotten more. Every time an incident happens, we somehow protect against that kind of incident, and. Uh, uh, you know, like the sh like taking your shoes off. You have to take your shoes off because one guy had a shoe bomb. Mm -hmm. Now they you don't make this? you take your shoes the off. Wait, let me finish. Let me finish. Oh. Right. They don't make oh, you take card. your they don't make you take your shoes off in any other country. But we still make you take your shoes off. It, ridiculous, you know. Yeah. This card, the government got a hundred dollars from me, uh -huh. and and my fingerprint. It's called a global entry. Yeah. Uh, I don't have to take my shoes, my belt off. I don't. I don't. E I don't, I don't either. I don't either. Uh, why is that? Because I'm over. You 70, don't go anywhere. I'm over seventy-five. Seventy-five. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So hmm. sucker you. Uh, yes, Renee. Yes, Renee. So if I won the lottery, it was going to. I wanted a Learjet. So I never had to go through TSA again. <laughs> See, and they beat me up when I said I wanted a Bentley. <laughs> I don't care if it's a Learjet. I just want a plane that I don't have to go through the regular crap. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I did find out, by the way, if, if you took the payout, you still yeah. have to pay taxes on that. Yeah. yeah. You know, it isn't like the payout includes the tax on the money. Hey, uh, did you buy a ticket in South Carolina, Alex, and you're holding out? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, you're trying to screw us out of our $2 million? And listen, most people, a lot of people don't come forward for quite a few days because they, you know. They have to get stuff together. They have to get, I mean, the first thing I would do, I wouldn't tell anybody I had won it yet. Call I would lawyer. immediately call my business manager and say, what the <laughs> fuck do we do here? And he would probably say, get a lawyer, you know. Yeah. 
And this, the guy in South Carolina probably put a beer bottle down that was wet on top of the ticket, couldn't read the numbers, <laughs> and doesn't realize he's got the winning ticket. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure. I'm sure whoever has the winning ticket. South uh, Mason Dixon. You, 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 you know, I don't think any of us out. were we to win, we would suddenly rush out and go collect it. We would first, you know, you you have a lot of time to collect it. I think up to well, you know, one point six billion every day. Can you imagine how much interest you're losing every day you don't collect it? Yeah, but that's kind of nothing Here. compared to <laughs> and compared to getting yourself protected. Well, you know, if I if I put all that money, which after taxes would come to something like I don't know, five hundred five hundred million dollars, okay, and I, I, I put I, and, and I put it in my back, back and, well, one point six, it paid out at eight fifty five or something like that, right? And then you figure half of that's going to go to taxes. So before you threw, let's say you get five hundred million. Okay, if I took that five hundred million and I put it in Bank of America tomorrow, I get a statement next month for interest of thirty-two cents. Well, let me ask you this: the, the payout right yeah. is eight thirty-five. Isn't the difference between eight thirty-five and the one point six the taxes? No. No. no, what that no, is, what no. When you take the payout, what you're taking. See, if you take the thirty year, they take a certain amount of money. And they put it in escrow, all right. Yeah. And then the then the, the the bank starts paying you every year based on that, and they keep kind of collecting interest or whatever. Uh, and and it, so that amount of money is sitting there. If you take, you can choose to take that money instead of the full payout, which that money is being used to uh, uh, in escrow to pay off. The money. You get what I'm this saying? Is, uh, yeah, this is as almost as bad a deal as I got when I was bar well, no, so, I got no, all of these no. uh, series this is, this E savings the money. bonds. This is the money they put aside <laughs> to pay <laughs> off the... Uh, to pay off no, no, the, I, I, let me get the joke in, all right? Yeah. I, I got all these Series E <laughs> savings a good bonds. Joke. What? And, and they, they were only worth $12. You know, but they were supposed to be $25, but I had to wait seven years until I could cash them sure. in. Right, Jeff? He's absolutely right again. Yeah. Today. Oh, my God. What a terrible deal. Two guy. in a row. <laughs> Bad deal. Bad deal. Damn. Anyway, the point I was going to make here is that uh, you then are, are, are taking the money that they would have put into escrow that they, they, they put aside to pay off this, okay? Because what they do is they then put it in a bank, and they're paying off the thing with the interest off of all of that. And you get basically the interest every month. Uh, so if you take the complete payout, you then get that chunk of money. But the taxes haven't been taken out for it yet. You then pay the tax on that. Mm. Now, this is a bummer. You know, I don't know how much the tax I, I, would be, uh, what their new I'm, rules now. I'm glad I didn't win so I don't get ripped off like that. <laughs> well, yeah, fuck them. I'm glad I didn't win. Take your money. I don't need it. Pasha. <laughs> But you're in such a high tax bracket that you're now a one percenter. Hey, yeah. you know something? As bad as it sounds, I wouldn't mind being a one percenter. Well, there goes my lyrics. As long as I didn't <laughs> act like a one percenter. Oh, there you go. Ah, you see, there's the difference. Uh, you act like a two percenter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well here, here's an interesting piece of uh, news about the uh, what happened today. Fox News is standing by its rival cable news network after a bomb scare forced CNN's New York headquarters to be evacuated this morning. The Hollywood Reporter obtained an internal memo sent out by Fox News head of, uh, of HR Kevin Lord addressing the bomb scare and detailing how Fox News is responding. We want to take this opportunity to inform you that Fox News is taking ample precautions on the security front in our New York headquarters given the spacious... A suspicious, rather, package found at uh, CNN this morning. Lord's memo says, uh, we condemn all attempted acts of violence against media organizations. Oh, and our thoughts are with CNN. Look trying to be a human. Uh, 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 our thoughts are with CNN for the safety of all their employees. The memo adds, we have met with security <laughs> team and are treating this with extra vigilance. All of our usual protocols are already in place. 
uh, some of which are roving patrols around the perimeter of the building, along with every incoming package being x-rayed and screened. This is a precaution taken by our mail room on a daily basis. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever been to Fox in New York City, but to begin with, there are these wonderful um, buttresses they have there that look like they're kind of like part of the scenery, you know, part of the way they de design the building. But really what they are is they're to pre they are driven into the ground really deep, and they're just things there to prevent trucks from ramming, crash, in. ramming into the Fox building. Well, they've had that when, you, when I go in there and I had to do the security thing, it's up the gazang at uh, at uh, at Fox. So I don't know what they're doing to up their security, but uh, they don't need to. They really don't need to. I, I remember back in the 90s, you just, in Paris at the Vendome, they, they had those uh, security buttresses. Oh, uh, we're getting another Apple. travelogue from Phil. Yeah. So here's the thing. all of We you get it, Phil. Is, you went to France. <laughs> Yeah. I and think, I got underpants. Yeah. I think that every school in the United States should have one of those. Should have a set of those around the front of the school so that no for just for serious reasons, <laughs> no bus got out of control and it rammed into the school. But on the other reason is to keep very bad stuff from plowing into them. And I don't think there's enough schools that do that. Yeah. Hey, I just had to say one more thing about what Alex was saying about Fox. Fox, it must be a very sexist organization. <laughs> they have a male room. No female room? <laughs> All righty. Uh, Why'd you laugh, Phil? Because you were the only one. Yeah, well, you got no... no well, uh, in his defense, Alex, I laugh at my own jokes, too. My justification is if I, if, uh, I can't, if I don't find my own jokes funny, how the fuck do I expect to find anyone else, anyone else to find them funny? But in his case, uh, yeah, you're the only one who was laughing, so. No, too bad. Mm. Yeah, for yeah. you. Yeah. So yeah, anyway, um, um, uh, you know, I mean, this whole thing well, is very... bad for it, us for having to listen to it. it it's very scary, That's and it, it speaks to, to, I mean, I really think it, 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 you've got to blame Trump on this one. He's, oh, and, yeah, he started and, and, it. And he should... Trump sent the bomb. He, he should, no, he should come forward and say to the public, you know, maybe I've got to down my rhetoric, too. If I'm going to ask the press to do it, mm -hmm. then I should do it myself. But That's he isn't saying that. What he's saying Was is, it? I'm going to keep up saying what I've always been saying, but the press has to slow their rhetoric down. What? I was watching him at a rally today, and he said, I'm being nice. I'm trying to be nice. I'm, tr uh, I'm trying to... Uh, he, he kept repeating that, that he, you know, he was toning down his rhetoric. Uh that, that's, you know, I think he was being facetious, but... You of know, course he was being saying. facetious, Phil, and he shouldn't be facetious. It's a time for a president, when something like this happens, to make the public feel safe and to engender a certain camaraderie among the, 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 the public and just say, hey, you know, I know we're going through a very tough campaign here, but we, uh, when all is said and done, we're all Americans, and, and let's remember that. You know, but we don't get that's that. That's what he said. We don't, no, he didn't say that, Phil. That's he didn't what say I heard. That. He didn't. Really? Yeah, I didn't. he said we should come together. And uh, he said no, we'll we come together everything. under his banner and in, under his terms, Phil. Because he's the president. He's an asshole. He ain't my president. I don't think he's Jeff's president. I don't think he's, he's Brian's either. president. I don't think he's Renee's he's president. The, he isn't our president because he doesn't president. represent us or our... our, our uh, but he represents me, and he's got the keys to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. No, so, you know, no, he doesn't have the keys to it, Phil. We, we have the keys he's to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. He said that to Leslie Stahl, too. He said, I'm the president and you're not to her. Yeah, you know, he's he's living there and you can't evict the guy. Uh, it's like a rental. But why does he know? have to rub it in all the time and let us know that he's mm -hmm. the president? We know that. Because you guys keep in. saying that he's not the president, that he's not yeah, your president. I'm sorry. Birther, 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 birther. For yeah. eight, for seven and a half freaking years. It was not until August of 2016, when Donald Trump finally stood up there, even after 
after President Obama showed us his frickin' birth certificate. Yeah, Phil, we'll see if What's he's that got to, to do with it? When the next Democrat... What's that got to do up? with it? We'll hold to those fucking words. I doubt you'll keep well, your fucking Phil, words. Well, Phil, I, I suggest you watch a movie that is on Netflix, uh, and I'm sure you won't, even though it's not a hatchet piece on the guy. It just basically tells his story and, and what he does and what he's done for for Trump. It's called Get Me Roger Stone. And it's all about Roger Stone. I suggest all of you watch it if you have Netflix. It's really very good. We just I just watched it again for the second time with Marjorie. And it is about Roger Stone. And all this stuff that you see Trump doing really came from the mind of Roger Stone. Oh, the whole Bertha thing came from Roger Stone. The Tom Cruise's father killed Kennedy came from Roger Stone. Roger Stone had an article about uh, about Ted Cruz placed in the National Enquirer saying Ted Cruz had five mistresses. You know, this all these things that that you that we attribute to being uh, Trump's guile. Uh, he they even have Stone saying things in a speech he's giving, and then having Trump saying the same exact thing in a speech a few days later. Wow. You know. Is that, you said HBO or Showtime, I'm sorry. Uh, Netflix, Netflix. Oh, Netflix, yeah, was, thank was you. Wasn't you know, I've Stone. Seen that. I've seen that you can watch that. I, you know, I'm going to have to watch it now. I wondered what okay. that was. It's, uh, it's, thank you. It's required viewing. It's really good. It's, you know, and it's not a hatchet piece on Stone. In fact, you kind of watch him, and in a way, you don't like him, but you kind of don't hate him. You know, you kind of like go, yeah, this guy's responsible for all this shit we're going through now. But somehow he's he's somewhat beguiling because he is so unapologetic for what he does, um, and his his whole his whole playbook, which they list in the movie, and he he states, uh, seems to be Donald Trump's playbook: never admit you're wrong, never ever mm -hmm. admit you're wrong. Uh, uh, things like that's that. That's not something a man does. At least he's said, taken his advice of his advisors. Well, he fired Roger Stone. Roger Stone isn't his fired advisor. Fired everybody. He was his advisor, believe it yeah. or not. But he isn't yeah. anymore. No, no but, but I, mean, I, I understand from the, what they seem to s indicate in the film is Trump, while he got rid of Stone as a, an on-site advisor, didn't he stop calling him for advice. That's not that special. And And, of course, Roger Stone's, you know, Roger Stone's partner was in their firm in Washington. Sid Manafort, huh? Man Manafort. Yeah, it was Manafort. Uh, I didn't know. Black yeah. and, and uh, I, I think Manafort, Black and, and Stone. Oh. Yes. Uh, two things. Uh, first off, Phil, I sent you a link in the Skype talk. And then the other thing is, is that I read that someone said that when... Mueller's investigation becomes public, it is going to be for multiple international people, too. Good. I can't wait. So that's going to be interesting. Well, who knows what Mueller's getting together? We don't you know. know. You know. We have uh, no idea now. Uh, I know. You know, and I... This, this what, new what? Skype, I can't figure out where anything is. Okay, so down in the bottom of your left-hand corner, there's a little open conversation box, or actually it's a little box with two lines in it. Oh, left, no, left I saw side. that. By the I way, next, that uh, I think it's link. next Monday maybe, we'll find out whether, the, right? or next Tuesday, we'll find out whether they're, my old Skype still works. <laughs> Is that November 1st? Yeah. And if it's <laughs> you not, and Damien are going to have some serious problems. Well, well, Damien doesn't do the video, so it doesn't matter. No, but he's, yeah, that's true. It doesn't matter. If I wasn't okay. doing the video here, I wouldn't care, okay? But I'm doing the video, and I do care about keeping this Skype going. So according to them, it will keep going. It will keep working, but I'm sure they're going to pester the shit out of me to, you know, to change it, you know. Okay, so if I may. So I'm, I'm sorry, Phil. So Costco is selling a Desk ZT electric desk that is both a sit-down desk and a rise desk in one. Does it go on top of a desk, or is it its own desk? It's its own desk. Why, okay. why are you... I want the one that goes on top of a desk. Oh, okay. Got why? It. Like the very yeah, Why desk. do you because need it? Because he already has Why do desk. you need it, Phil? Uh, it's just uh, so you can uh, see. I'm sitting all the time. My Better wrist, for his heart. 
Yeah, my wrist is on the on the uh, sort of halfway on the desk, and it's cutting off the circulation. And uh, I'm I'm sitting too much. The back of my legs hurt from being in the chair uh, mm -hmm. all day, and so I want to be able to stand up and work. Mm. Okay. All right. Uh, and I've got a buddy that built his <laughs> that built his own. And uh, uh, he just got one like uh, Renee is talking about. It's an electric one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it looks like it yeah. came out of the Apple store. Well, this, is, this, is, this, is an couple, this thing was less than $200. Yeah. This, is an, this is a really exciting conversation. Well, well stand-up desks are important. Well, yeah. yeah but Alex, so, I'm checking my sleep sleep. Oh, man. Did you, read my oh, heart. I, uh, did you I do it do last, well last night? night. Wait, did you do it last night? Did you put the sleep thing on? It says it was a problem and... Everybody froze up Realizing again. Everybody's my freezing up nights. Tonight. I need to verify yeah. it. Uh, by yeah. the way, uh, yeah, yeah, me. If, if I yeah. tap Mickey, he's probably going to say good night, pal, <laughs> and I don't like that. Listen, it's eleven twenty-five. Good night, pal. <gasps> <gasps> See, so once a, a once a night, he time. does that. He says good night, pal. Uh, well, I I got my worst score. Uh, since I've been keeping track, mm -hmm. and everything was 100 percent except. Well, you're only, not explaining you, to people what that piece of shit is all about. Oh, I have a CPAP machine, and yes. I have a, uh, and it sends a signal uh, to a uh, to a website, and then I'm able to get my gr sleep grade every night. And the doctor uh, so, sees it too, right? The doctor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, normally I do pretty sure. good. Today, I got an 84, and it's only because if I would have slept for two, an hour and a half more, I would have gotten 100. But I only had 5.5 5 hours and 24 minutes of usage, and uh, because of that, I got an 84. And I, and I hate that. trying to get me to do anything. that again. Yeah, well, you should. I hate no, getting anything but an A. You know, unless well, I get 100%, I'm not happy. Last last night, last night, last night, last night, I uh, I went to sleep at two twenty two a.m. and I woke yeah. up at nine fifty four a.m. for a total of seven hours thirty two minutes. That's short for me. My restful amount of time. Ready for this? Okay. Seven hours and twenty four minutes. Wow. Okay. Uh, restless was eight minutes. Awake zero minutes. Although I think it's wrong because I got up once in the night to take a pee. Uh, my best sleep was between 2.22 a.m. and 5.05 a.m. for two hours and 43 minutes of the best sleep that I got all night. Yeah. Do you have steps, Alex? Huh? Steps? You know how many steps you took and all that? Oh, I have, another, a thing. Different I have another thing for that. And that's like Fitbit, but... This is just a sleeping app. It's this little guy right there that Alex talked about the other night. I have the yeah. three... Yeah, I had 5,026 steps today. Oh, you've got it on there? Okay. 5,026 steps today. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me see here. I, for a distance of 2.54 miles. Oh, let me see where I go. And I uh, exercised for well over, what is it? How, how much did I exercise for? Uh, workouts. Uh, my indoor cycle, I did... Uh, uh, 200, I uh, did a total of uh, 255 calories. Uh, my average heart rate was 93 BPM. You know, I love what this watch does. I got you all beat. I sold 12 steps and a landing. Excuse me. I, see. <laughs> I sold 12 steps and a landing. Yeah. Did you sell a house? Yeah. No, no, no. I'm wondering how floor. Scott's... Scott's getting ready to sell his, clearly, so I'm hoping he's doing okay. He's working hard on it. He Let's says. talk about uh, another little subject here that is interesting. Um, uh, what's her name? That cunt over at, uh, over at NBC. Megan Kelly. Megan Kelly. Oh, uh, uh, blackface? Yeah, well, what she said was she saw nothing wrong with blackface at Halloween. Oh, Which really? Then yeah. every, everybody went that? went went apoplectic over because anytime she, Megan Kelly says anything, they get apoplectic. She apologized. Yeah. So yeah. Well, uh, 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 how do but, but she can't knit, she can't do away with her sheer stupidity. You know. One one of the tweets was. Um, it's interesting to watch five four white people discuss blackface. 
Uh, well, yeah, yeah, there were four white people, three white, yeah, there were four white people there talking about blackface, yeah. Well, usually the only people that wear blackface are white people. It doesn't matter. Well, no, that's not necessarily true. They many times use blacks in minstrel shows, and what they did was they painted their lips white. White. To make them look Just like lips. they were white wearing blackface. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh um, uh, first of all, first of all, let me say that uh, uh, I've, I've heard too much and too many people saying that minstrel shows made fun of blacks with minstrel shows, and they weren't making fun of blacks. Uh, they, it was simply a stylistic thing. It was a stylistic choice. Nobody was trying to imitate black people, and there were some black people in minstrel shows. They were basically a musical variety show, and it had a certain style and pattern that it took, one of which was blackface. But the really stupid comment I heard today was Al Roker, who was on the Today Show talking about this, and he says, well, when I was younger, I hated the fact that on uh, Amos and Andy, uh, two, black, two white guys were playing Amos and Andy. And I thought I about know. that for a moment, and I went, I was on the radio. wait a minute, hold on a second, how old is Al Roker? Well, yeah. he wasn't <laughs> old enough to hear them on t radio. That, mm -hmm. uh, the only place that he could have ever seen Amos and Andy was on television, and they weren't played by white guys on television. They were on right. radio because they were, they were uh, uh, created by Charles Freeman, uh, uh, Freeman and Correll were the two guys. And uh, by the way, the only radio show in America, in spite of the fact that they were both white, that employed nothing but black actors. Nothing but black actors. So good for them, you know. But when they went to television... They had made a big mistake by making one movie of Amos and Andy and wearing blackface, and they didn't like the way it looked. They didn't like the way it felt. And they said, no, if it's going to go to TV, we've got to have an all-black cast. And they went, and they went to the, uh, uh, as their source for their actors, what were called bl race films, uh, black films that mm -hmm. were being made at the time. In fact, one of them, either Amos or Andy, I think it was the guy who played uh, 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 Andy, was a famous director in black films. Uh, not the Kingfisher? Uh, 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 no, not him. No. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, if you go and look at Amos and Andy, it was a it really, you know it was a situation comedy. So there were some broad types on the show, like the Kingfish, like uh, Andy. Uh, Amos, however, was very normal and very, you know level-headed and a hard-working guy who owned a cab company. And everybody else who was on that show were people like lawyers and cops and so on. It was the first and time that black. black people were ever portrayed as having normal trades. Mm -hmm. and, no, but, and, and what happens to that show? All of a sudden, there's a whole racial upswing, and they're taken off the air. And they, well, they were taken off the air, and then they were put into syndication, and when the whole thing happened, they were taken out of syndication, and those shows were lost for years. And it was a I shame. I used to watch that. They were a shame because they were, they, they were some very good shows, and there wasn't a stereotype there. And it hired black people. These were black people who were getting network money. Right. There was one great episode that I still remember. Um, uh, Andy was trying to sell in, invisible glass. And so uh, what he would do is one of them was in the closet and uh, he had glass in there. And, at, and as soon as he said the word, uh, and, and he made like he was going to break the glass, except the guy in the closet broke the glass, so you could hear the glass breaking. But then the guy outside no, that would be that would be your favorite show because that comes close to minstrel shows. But uh, the best the best one I remember was a Christmas show they did with Andy and his daughter, and him trying to tell her uh, him telling her him, her stories about he and his friends and so on and Christmases past. And it was a sweet, wonderful show. And, you know, people forget that the Amos and Andy that was on television was really, we, we always used to say, well, who was the first black person to star in a TV show? Well, it was all the people on Cosby. Amos and Andy. And nobody ever Cosby. remembers that. It's, oh, Bill Cosby, isn't it? Or Diane Carroll, isn't it? Oh, my God. No, no. It was, it was in fact, uh, you know, Spencer, what was Spencer, what, what's his name? Diane uh, Carroll was the first interracial kiss. Was that it? 
Friedman no, Lieutenant Gosden. And Star Trek. Oh, let's yeah, not Star Trek. Star Trek. But, yeah. I, but, but nobody ever says, oh, yeah, the first black guys ever to star in a TV show on networks were on Amos and Andy. They forget that completely. Yes, Alex, sir, Charlene. Oh, my father used to collect old film on reels and everything. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of Open the Door, Richard? Mm -hmm. It was like a short. No, no, I I I heard I remember the song Open and the Door Richard. The door, Open the door Richard. Richard. Open the door Because let my me father in. used to have that and he would play it when I was a kid. He had a projector and he would play Jeez. it. And it was sort of like um Dave's Not Here with Cheech and Chong, I think, or something. I'm not sure. I haven't seen it in years. And I don't have his film anymore. I sold it to a guy in New York uh, that collects toys. I uh, Gallon. He he came to my house and bought all my father's old movies. No. But Ira Gallon. Ira Gallon. I know Ira Gallon. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I I knew it was getting a good home with him. So yeah, yeah. Uh, what were yeah. you gonna say, Renee? Dusty Fletcher, Fred Wind. The director was William Forrest uh, Conch. It was in 1947. It was a whopping 12 minutes long, and it was a. Sh it's listed as a short, a comedy, and a musical. Yeah. Oh, this was the true. radio Maybe cast? Find it. No, no, no. This is Open the Door, Richard. Maybe I'll oh. find it on YouTube and I can see it again. Mm. Hmm. Um, as far as I was looking up Amos and Andy, yeah. why are there no photos next to Fred Gozman well, and uh, uh, Charles? Uh, Freeman F. Gosden and Charles Carell. Yeah. Uh, they, 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 did radio, they did radio. They should have photographs of them there, but they don't, do they? I'm, no. No. I'm looking here and they don't. So that was the radio people. So the television show was in 1951. Well, they, they not only were the radio people, they were the people who created it. Okay. Uh, um, but I, I used to watch in the late 50s, maybe 58, 59. Yeah. It has a 1951 start 1951 date. 1951 so. is the start date, and I think it lasted for, it's lasted for four seasons. And so then, I was watching reruns yeah. as a kid? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, you were. Alvin 52. Childress was Amos. Uh, Spencer Williams was Andy. He was also the director, famous director in, in black films. Uh, Tim Moore was the Kingfish. Johnny Lee okay. was Calhoun. Uh, then you had Sapphire, who was, you know, very, right. uh, very erudite and, you know, not stereotyped. Amanda Randolph is Mama. Uh, Nick Stewart is Lightning. Uh, you remember the name of the lodge? Jesus, that's a no. long list of human. Oh, it's for all four years. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what was the lodge called? It was uh, the <clears throat> had a had an unusual name. Jester Harrison was in it. He was a gospel songwriter. God, it, was, it, was, it gave a lot of people work. You know, and yeah. when you, and when you talk about well, who who were the first black people to be on network television in prime time? You got to say uh, at least you got to say uh, Alvin Childress, Spencer Williams, and Tim Moore. Not uh, Rochester. Uh, Rochester. Uh, Rochester. Uh, Rochester. Uh, yeah, that's Eddie. Eddie, 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 Anderson. Eddie Anderson. Eddie he wasn't Anderson. black. He was black. He was black, yeah. but he was after this. He was no, but was, he wasn't a he wasn't a star of a show. Oh. You know. <laughs> All right, let's just talk about it. When was Jack Benny's television show? Well, I think it was 51 ben, also. Benny started 1950. about... 1950. 1950, yeah. I've yeah. never oh, Rochester. So Rochester, so Rochester Yeah, Rochester, but he's not lead, but he's Rochester... He's not a lead. What I'm saying is there were a lot of blacks on... There were blacks on television. They were usually in, you know, uh, comic, well, the way com, comic Benny roles. played them... The way the way no, no. Benny played it, you would think that Rochester was a lead because he always gave him, you know, the the straight the straight, guy. Uh, straight guy. Well, no, actually, uh, Rochester was even more better, more interesting in in con in in retrospect than that. Yeah. Because Benny did not want to play Rochester as subservient, even though right. he right. was his butler. He used to tell Benny off. Yeah, like, he yeah, would always make them. jokes about Benny at Benny's expense. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he and then was, Benny would get a good dig back on occasions. No, no, Benny never got a dig back because that wasn't... What? No, mm -hmm. no, because Benny... Okay, let me explain this. I've had to explain this on a several occasions. Okay. Benny was not a comedian. He was a clown. Now, here's the difference between a comedian and a clown. A comedian pulls jokes on people. A clown has jokes pulled on him. 
every joke with Benny was at his was expense. In mm. other words, the joke was on him. It was something I adapt, adopted when I went in, when I did radio in San Francisco. When I was in a comedic situation, I would play the guy everybody made fun of. Uh, I remember you talking about that, uh, that you were intentionally going to do that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, I think it's funnier. Okay. <laughs> you know. But, Alex, but, but Benny guy? always had the joke pulled on him. I always like to say the best, the best line ever. He had the greatest writers in the world. There was this one episode where he is going through a supermarket and a little kid comes up to him and says, pardon me, are you Jack Benny? And he goes, why, yes, I am, kid. You know? And he says, oh, you know, I, I play the violin. And he says, do you play like I do? And he says, I used to. <laughs> That's the perfect example of Benny having the joke pulled on him. Uh, there Alex, you go. Alex, you know that guy, and I apologize for calling him that guy. He's the comedian that you talked to for the half hour. He's coming to New York to do a show, you said. Will yeah, Durst. Yeah, he's coming in. Uh, uh, oh, Durst. Uh, Durst. Early, yeah. Uh, yeah. Early, Durst. Uh, early November. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, are, is everyone going gonna to let us know? Because maybe I'll go to see him or something. Yeah, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down to see him. I got to really want to yeah you're gonna go too oh okay yeah yeah because you I, talked that he might stay with you right well no he's i'm gonna have lunch with him someday you know. so oh. he's gonna come here to the studio and do one of his things with me here rather than you know on mm -hmm. the phone uh yeah on Skype. i have a will durst request yeah so uh, there's first off is he is it gonna happen before the election uh no okay mm -hmm. so number one Wilder, and I've talked about this before, Wilders is very active within infrastructure projects within California. And we've got some politically active groups or people within our group, and it would be kind of nice to actually maybe talk, listen to him talk about what it's like to be where he is because he's doing infrastructure advertisement when these actual uh, amendments come up and bills come up. So it would be kind of nice to actually, you know, get his take on how that kind of works from his direction. His wife we changed the name of Stern Grove to Robin Williams uh, Grove or something for uh, the comedy day thing. His wife is not very Stern funny. Grove. Stern Grove is someplace. It isn't in, it isn't in Golden Gate Park. Oh well, where did they do the comedy? Uh, it, it was in the sheep, the meadow, or something. Oh, I, I, okay. I, now it's Robin Williams Meadow. I yes. Guess, okay. like that. And is Alex, that Hippie Hill? I have no idea. <laughs> when are you coming? When are you coming west? Who me? Yeah. I don't know. I really don't know. Well, yeah. Marjorie needs a vacation, so you two, are you going to, like, hook up and come together? Well, there's one thing I'm going to have to do at some point. I'm going to have to go up to uh, Portland and see Ronnie. Right. Uh, yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. And uh, 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 Bubbles, for the longest time, has been nudging me to do a, a mm -hmm. reunion show, or several of them, actually, in the Bay Area. So uh, I might take a week off from this and go do that. You know, but uh, uh, I don't know yet. I really don't know yet. I still have to figure it all out. Yeah, I'm just kind of putting a little bug in your ear because yeah. I know you wanted to see her before things got. The older we get, the less we leave the house, you know. So. Yeah, I have that problem, that too. But like Marjorie's been complaining because we, ha we haven't taken a vacation in like five or six years, something like that. You know, well, you went to Italy hey, last, right? No, we went to China last. Oh, China last. That's what it was. Hey, Alex, if you end up coming out and doing one of those reunion shows and you need any extra help, I'm available. Back. Yeah, okay. Sure. sure. I, I, I don't know right now what how, how we're going to do it, but uh, I'm going to see if my business manager wants to get involved, and that'll take some of the problems of, off of it. But uh, there's, there's a place up in, uh, up in Sonoma that wants us to do an, a night up there. And uh, the, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, the club down in San Francisco, uh, Cobb's Pub. Which one? Cobb's oh, Pub Cobb. wants, a, wants us to Oh, do Cobb's? It. That would be cool. Yeah, Which Cobb's. one in Sonoma? Is that the, uh, like, I the have no hop? idea. I have no idea. Oh, okay. Uh, and we might, uh, you know, we might 
do another one uh, in Mill Valley. You know, we're we're we're, we're looking. Oh to, yeah, looking. Rock we're looking. Morning. We're looking. Actually, looking for something in the South Bay. We might do. Roosters well, why are you going like to go from place to place to place? Why don't you pick a central place and make all of us who want to see you go to you? Well, because like three in, in, in the one. old days, I would have just rented out the Masonic Auditorium right. and done a show. But I don't know how many people I'm going to get doing this, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, so I would rather work in small venues that are simply giving us a piece of the house, all right, and paying the comedians. Well, uh, you know, the, the thing is, the comedians themselves have a following, so depending on how many you put on the stage, they're going to have their draw. Not, not the guys that I'm going to have on the show. Uh, the only one that would probably have a following would be like maybe Bobby Slayton. Yeah. From Durst. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to fly to California. I, I would like to, but I know She's I'm gonna... not going <laughs> to. Now, what time is it? But, I'm yeah. not flying to California either. Well, but they're already, coming so. to you, so that's cool. Yeah. It's 11.45. Yeah. Oh, by the way, on this new watch, watch, isn't it amazing how loud it is? The old one wasn't this loud. It's also obnoxious. Is it really? Yeah, it's loud and obnoxious. Really? It's 11.45. Now you got it's me sold on the 4 watch. I have the it's 3. <laughs> Don't it's waste your money. So the only thing about the 4 is that it's a bigger screen. And if you Maybe have heart problems, five. Well, you, you got the four, yeah, right? No, five's coming out. You got the four, right? No, she's got a three. Oh, she's got a three. Oh, I got a three, yeah. I, and I've got a two, and I don't wear it. Well, I had a two, and I found out, you know what it doesn't do? It's no. 11.46. Swallow? <laughs> it has the Mickey Mouse, but Mickey doesn't talk. Yeah, maybe I'll change. I have a, a cephalopod, so I have the science one on mine. So I'll change it to Mickey. Yeah, I, I I actually I didn't like Mickey until I got the new watch, and the new watch has better resolution, and um, it just fills out the screen nicer, and so Mickey looks really good, you know. <laughs> and so, uh, you right, Mickey? It's eleven forty-six. <laughs> Is he Steamboat Willie, or can he be anything? Or he's the um, he's the Steamboat Willie uh, kind of Mickey. Um, you know, with the round blank eyes, mm. you know, without the, without the, without and the black uh, and white, he doesn't have red. Oh, well, wait a minute. Does he have pupils? It, it takes uh, so oh, little. Oh, to oh he does. Have, he does. He does have the pupils. So he's a later on Mickey. Yes. Uh, Renee. So did you guys see that someone took one of the Confederate soldiers statues and put googly eyes on him? No. no. It was freaking hilarious. Google it. I never so, saw it, but I heard it. It's, it's a bra so this is a dark bronze statue. And all of a sudden in the middle of it are these white googly eyes. <laughs> how do you how do you feel how do you feel about those Confederate uh, statues? It was so cool. How do you feel about the Confederate statues? Me oh. Yeah. Okay, my two cents is they need to be in a museum, and I don't care after that. Well, a museum is not a bad idea, but, I, you know, yeah. they're artifacts. You know, they're, they're uh, 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 not the ones that were put up like 40 years ago, but I'm talking about the ones that were put up right after the Civil War. Uh, I, I think as artifacts, um, you know, I mean, uh, you, you go to Italy and they're like statues of Trojan soldiers or whatever, you know, Roman I, soldiers. Uh, I I just don't I'm I'm kind of conflicted on that. I mean, there, there were some that were put up in the 30s and the 40s, uh, basically to get at blacks. <laughs> okay, those should be torn down. But the ones that were put up there because uh, uh, you know there were a bunch of people who died in that town in the Civil War and so on. And they had a statue to them. I I I, I just. Uh, I don't know if I think those things should be torn down. I think they're history. Just move them to a yeah. I uh, I a agree museum. with Renee. Uh, I think that they should be in a museum. Uh, you know, if the if the Nazis that lost the war in Germany were to erect statues uh, uh, commemorating 
uh, their leaders, I, I I wouldn't agree with it. And well, they couldn't uh, anyway. The South- they couldn't anyway because in in Germany, you can't yeah, even so much as display a, a swastika. I remember going. I was in Erlingen, and uh, I passed by a shop. It was a souvenir shop, and what they had was some old Nazi memorabilia, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, wings and things the like that. They had to cover the right. the the, uh, the Nazi symbol with like a strip of paper or bandaid bandaid or whatever. But they still sell it. They still you know? sell it, but you know, a lot of people I know people in America who would love to have something like that because it's it's a, it's mm-hmm. a relic of the war, you know. Yeah. It's not because they're well, Nazi. You no, know. I understand. It's just that, uh, you know, I, I look at these monuments and, uh, you know, I know it was a very conflicted battle uh, between the North and the South. And it, 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 they were very divided, much like we are now. But not, on the not, other hand... Not in exactly the same way. I, I don't think anybody's getting killed today. Not like that. Well, no. just well, because the black. bombs go off. You know, the bombs didn't go off. That, that's why. Uh, what do you mean? You know, I, I, in the Civil War, Phil, something like a half a million people got killed. Yeah, but it had to start. When, when at Fort Sumter, it was only one, it was only one round. And then uh, a half a million people ended up getting killed. Unfortunately it's, speaking, the Civil War had the largest amount of American casualties when factoring in both sides than any other war in our history, past and present. Now, why, yes. why is that? Why is that? Oh, because we were fighting it's against been, each other. No, there's one and because we lack the medical. Equipment. That's that's the answer. Then Sepsis. you get to World War One, and you have a lot of deaths. But Sepsis. then you get to World War Two, and there are a few less deaths. And then you get to the modern wars, and really we don't have the same amount of casualties that we have. But had then, in, Alex, take into consideration, you know, modern times within the like last forty or fifty years, how many people with severe diagnoses of uh, PTSD and other. Cranial oh, oh, well, and uh, well, I mean, we're, we're not even, we're not even. We also we, have air wars. You know, no, but what, no, we, no, we have no, 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 worse than death but, as but what America, happens so. is right now you get somebody wounded, the triage, the helicopter's there in, in moments and they get them to a hospital faster, <clears throat> where in the old days, uh, in the Civil War, you just, you know, you just bled to death. I'm sorry, you know. Uh, yeah, where he has it, limbs amputated. Yeah. And they saw it all. Yeah. They just thought it off. So, I mean, that's why it was... It Without was, anesthetic or problem. But all I'm saying is is that this, this, we're not in a civil war situation. There's not a war between... The, the two sides that are against each other are in every state of the Union. Yeah. It could they're happen, They're not divided though. by... No, they're if not... It, no, if it turns because, hot, like Phil is saying, it would be like urban warfare on the streets and you know, yeah, you know you're, uh, weapons, Jack Bishop weapons and all Jack things. Bishop is constantly saying that there should be a division of states and and so forth and this is not unusual there's a lot of people who feel the way he does but back to your statuary I'm not uh, a to anarchy yeah well I, uh, back to your statu- statuary uh, yeah I, I agree with Renee I think they should be in museums and uh, and that's the place for them well I believe in anarchy Brian I said I'm not opposed to it. Oh no, I'm I, yeah, I believe in anarchy because uh, in, in in the 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 ultimate thing in, in if you're going to be an anarchist is responsibility. Well, yeah. You have Most to know you have to know no, no you, you have to know right from wrong. Well, the only reason that people don't feel they have to know right from wrong is they sit around waiting for the state to tell them what is right and what is wrong. Rather right. than having to determine for themselves what's right and wrong. In other words, under a true anarchy uh, you wouldn't need to have stoplights because people would l- give way to each other as a matter of courtesy, and um, as a, you know. But uh, all I'm saying is, with anarchy comes great responsibility, and we're just not Alex. ready for that because we've had it bred out of us. Because we just say, if it isn't if it isn't against the law, I can do it. Yeah, well, uh, if you were a true anarchist, you'd stop and watch that sunset. What's in, oh, oh well. Oh, oh, oh God, that's beautiful again tonight. Uh, 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 yeah, oh, this oh. is why I'm here, and I'm not near anybody like Phil. Oh, oh, don't don't yeah. don't, don't, you know, don't change anybody, that. Don't change that shot. I'm putting it full screen so that everybody. Did anybody in the East Coast see the um, harvest moon tonight? It was a huge full moon. It was orange. I saw it in Jersey. It was beautiful. Yeah. 
I had the camera out, so I'm going to see if I can snap some photos of it tonight. Yeah. Mm. Oh, look God. at that, folks. Isn't that just you nice? You got the golden hour. You know, uh, every, every night that we, uh, um, uh, we, we argue and yell and scream at each other. And isn't it nice to just end the program looking at that? Oh, boy. It's... We, I'll tell you, we get some pretty gorgeous. Years before us, it'll be there hundreds yeah. and thousands. Hey, of years uh, there. yeah, Renee, you, you lost a Hawaiian island yesterday. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, there was an, an island uh, in Hawaii that was wiped out uh, in the last uh, hurricane. Uh, no, a was, Category Five hit the Marshallese Islands. Well, this was a Hawaiian island. At it five. Was, no, it's one. Is so it's a United States island. I right. Mean, it's, it was the northern me. northernmost Hawaiian island, and it was only four hundred feet across, and I don't not remember how big. long. Not very big, and it was one of the newest island. The newest island, and there was a um, uh, a, a coast guard or uh, some sort of weather station there, but uh, it's gone. Yeah. It, so if you. you if you can imagine what happened to Florida, all those empty spots where uh, uh, pads where the houses were, this mm -hmm. island was never big in the first place. Those cement. It, if a if a cat five blew through there, it's gone. It's just sand anyway. Well, the island, so the I'm, island's gone. Yeah. So this is what we're what we've been saying. It's possible that global warming will not be coming in a slow and consistent pattern. It is possible with global warming that those hurricanes are gonna be able to wipe out entire cities within a couple of days. And we are nowhere near wrapping our brain around Well, they, that. they have. Look at uh, Puerto Rico, look at Houston, uh, look at Florida. Wait a minute, you know? your Puerto Rico didn't believe get in global warming. <laughs> by the way, I by the way, I wanna, I wanna ask you something. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask well, you no. something before we go here, uh, 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 Renee. Uh, is is that a fence around your property? So what the white one is, yes. It's it's yeah. to keep the immigrants out. I see. Yeah, because on an island, we got that as a big problem. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Really, the only yeah, thing they need to keep out They're swimming here. over. They're swimming over from Japan. Yeah, boy, that's a long haul. Yeah. Hey, I can see Japan from there. Yeah, you're Sarah Palin too, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, boy, that's a, yeah. yeah, you truly live in paradise. A bad hula skirt. Truly live in paradise. Wow. Anyway, um, uh, let me see. We here. We got about a minute left. Uh, let's uh, let's talk about something you feel apoplectic. Let's hear from Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Hi. Guys. <laughs> you How are you doing today? You've been somewhat quiet tonight. Yeah, she puts that out. I know. I know. Uh, Any comments about night. what we've been talking about? Yeah, at the other part, I've been trying to listen a little bit to the baseball game. Oh, I what's saw. Oh. What's the story? Wait, what's the score? Well, I, you know, I don't know right now. Keeping in uh, mind that any description Boston of the baseball is game is uh, uh, directly prohibited God. by the, uh, I must, you must get permission from the commissioner of baseball. I get That's you true. permission. MLB. So, Frickin' Boston's winning again. So, so which game number is this? Two. This is the second. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, Shoot. Anyway, I I think we can now uh, put on the theme here. It's a it's a final. <laughs> Boston four, Dodgers two. Second yeah. game over. You Somehow your 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 camera brightened up a little bit so that that the sunset didn't look as profound as it looked earlier but right. it's still the sun's gone it's still it's still nice it's still really nice well, we don't want to just see you i've got you full screen now let's get everybody <laughs> else up here too. full screen oh, thank there you renee that. has to take us to a luau someday yeah right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway she just wants to see all those men with just little grass skirts no, on. anyway let's say good night to brian just go to a mail room and say good night to brian <laughs> let's say good night to charlene let's say good night to Jeff. Yeah. Let's say good night to Phil. Let's say good night to Renee. Would all of you give a big wave goodbye? Okay, there they go. And uh, that's our citizen panel for tonight. Boy, that was a that was a that was a barnstormer, folks. That was a a Cat Five or something like that. I don't know, what does that mean? Cat Five is a cable. What am I talking about? Anyway, that's it for tonight, folks. Uh, I'll uh, be back again. Uh, well, first of all. 
Next is Jack Bishop in the intersection. That will be followed very closely by Connections uh, at uh, 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Tomorrow night, if you haven't joined him, boy, you really should. Damien's just got a nice casual show, and he talks about all kinds of crap. And I really like the show, and I want you to listen to it. It's The Exchange at 9.30 Eastern Daylight Time. And then tomorrow night, long about, uh, let's see here, 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. I'll be back again. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.